Now our last speaker before we open it for discussion. Uh, I'd like to introduce Kurt Barnes. Kurt is the founder and chair of Earthwise Center and the founder and CEO of 3CS. Kurt, I hope you're going to tell us about the, uh, the, the, what they are. Uh, he's a senior psychologist with extensive professional experience working with individuals and organizations at all levels of society, internationally in Mauritius and internationally. He's, uh, he's uh, a psychosocial expert on working with migrants in Africa. So you're really talking about somebody who's had their feet on the ground uh, dealing with these issues uh, uh, at uh, at the grassroots level and at the person-to-person -person level. And he's also a naturopathic physician. Kurt, please. Thank you, Gary. Where to start after all these uh, beautiful discourses and speech? Um, I'll be tempted to go right inside because this is where, as you've already pointed out and others have pointed out, that's where we should be going. Uh, no change possible without a psychosocial approach or psychological approach. However, I'd like to attract your attention to something. There's been a lot of activity during the past, let's say, 10 or 20 years. And yet, these activities have not been bringing peace as such. In fact, when we looked at these activities, if we take just one country's among others, like in France, for instance, for the past 10 years, we've had an increase of violence, which is unprecedented. Something like from 45,000, we would say, uh, criminal actions, it has moved up to 250,000. We see that doctors have been suffering uh, from people who've been trying to beat them up, to do all sorts of nasty things to them. Basically, they've been suffering from violence in an increase of 50% during the past 10 years. So although we have people like Greta and others doing things around, we have wonderful organizations and institutions doing the job of making people think and trying to change the rules around. The violence that we express as human is growing is not going down. Even nature itself is doing the same job. We have more volcanoes around, more earthquakes, and like we've seen the floods during the past days, everything is more and more violent. We have a situation where we could ask ourselves, are we still a civilization or is civilization in infancy? like a primitive one, where we're still, in fact, reacting on the flight and fight response. If we look around, we still see that. We still people suffering, see people suffering a lot. Some people are not willing at all to give away some of uh, their privileges so that others could live in a decent manner. And some that are developing more are not ready to give up the privilege of having a fridge that they've never had before. So all these different ways that we have that are colliding are putting us in a situation where we have to ask ourselves, why so much violence? Maybe after all, we are a species that inside itself has a need for domination. I would not say greed, because greed is just a byproduct of this need for domination to satisfy more and more of itself, but first there is this need for domination which produces violence. What can we do about that? We have all these organizations around, yet what do we see? With the COVID situation, we've had two extremes suddenly flaring up. On one side, you have hyper activities. On the other side, you have IPO activities. I mean by that, some people suddenly decide to fight against each other because they are grief for vaccine or they are against vaccine. The dualistic model 
is really in us. We have to do something about that. Like moving towards a third way. Let's look again at this. In our ordinary life, we have situations where if we look at a couple, some people will tell white lies. That's acceptable for many of us. But at the end of the day, these white lies might become the very reason why the marriage, the marriage is not working anymore. We really need to put on the table all the feelings that we have, the perception that we have, and in the same manner that we have seen that in the past, one of the people would protest, you would suddenly have in this peaceful protest what you call the black blocks. They just appear from nowhere. And they get engaged into violence. The violence is there. And it is more and more present. Some people would even say that you don't get anything without violence. It's useless to have a peaceful protest. However, with the confinement, we've suddenly seen peaceful protest without violence. Why? One of the so many explanations would be that suddenly people have been controlling borders, borders, limits. These are things that we need to apply to our own behaviors. We need to consider what our, our borders should be and what our limits of intake of life should be so that everyone could live a decent life. So maybe we should start to have a look at the only slide I have to propose to you. If you go on your picture, you would see on the right three little dots. Click on that dot and you have pin, just pin. Starting my dance with you, my friend. What you're saying is you, if you've been properly. That is the most important person in a change of anything. You may click on, on it again and the pin will come out and you will see me if you want to see me. But the most important person by all means is you. You are this person that can change. So let's have a little different type of dance. Let's go into ourself. Close your eyes for a minute, please. Just try to remember a time in your life where you felt at peace, a time where you felt confident that you didn't, didn't need to be violent to survive. A time where you felt that you could have new ideas, new perceptions. And just now, try to remember when you've closed your eyes, seeing yourself in the past where you didn't need to feel threatened. You felt good with yourself. You felt confident that you could do something. That there was no need to dominate anybody, but that you could have your place under the sun. Just try to feel that. And now, as Sri Aurobindo said, whenever you want to be in touch with the master, just think of him and you would feel an inspiration. You would have new ideas, new ways coming to yourself to change this world, to change yourself. So now just think of a world, visualize this world where you would see things being different. Have this picture in your mind. And whenever you're not quite sure if your attitude is the right one, 
If your behavior is the right one, just think of this visualization that you're holding inside, in your mind, in your heart. Put it in practice. Do the best you can. Don't think of ideologies. Don't think of strategies. Just trust that there's something in you that has the power to change things. Do it. Of course, we can always say is that nothing really matters until you reach your goal. But as we may say, the trip to that goal, the dance to that goal is also the way. Don't get stuck into uh, man opposed to women, um, masculine, feminine. Try to think of an androgynous way inside. Try to feel that, as Krishna would say, maybe in one life you were of a different sex. What it would feel like if you were that sex in that action. What it would be like if you were very poor. And from there, do what you feel is the best to change the things. Again, comes back the words pattern, so you can create new patterns. It also brings us to the borders. You make new borders because it's not just a matter of being nice and good. We're not in a care bear world. It's also a matter of agreement between you and others about how it's going to happen. So let it flow. The dialogue is always important. It's like what in the past used to be known as the bildung, which is, if we put it in a modern term, would be conscientization, that is, by talking in small groups all over the place, like we're doing now, we can activate this new way of being. We can make it happen. But for that, we need really to have more and more groups like the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research has been proposing today. We need to listen to each other and also to our own selves, to this sort of strange need that we have inside of ourselves of becoming dominant, controlling, and at the same time understanding if we do that too much, nothing works. So these are some of the ways we can use. That's what I had to propose to you for today. Thank you, Kurt, very much.